Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragon Age Origins. This is episode 3. Last time we made it to Ostagar. We are here joining the Grey Wardens. We are about to do the joining. We've got given a couple of quest lines to do. I've got me whole gang here of recruits along with Alistair and Duncan. And having a look in our Ostagar quest, we've got Tainted Blood and the Grey Warden's Cache. So we've got to recover the treaties from the Grey Warden Cache. This is like a bonus objective, a second task for the joining. Uh, and our first one, our primary objective is to find three vials of Darkspawn blood. So we've got a party of four, which is exciting. I haven't uh, dealt with uh, a party of four before. We've only had just me and Lesky, who's back in Orzammar. Um, so having a look at everything we've got here, Alistair has his equipment, Daveth and Jory also have those with a balanced greatsword, a longbow, an ash longbow, and warden's longsword because of, of grey iron. Let's have an inspector. There's a blade of the grey wardens marked with the stamp of the griffin upon its pommel. So uh, I have gotten some confirmation um, thanks to uh, thanks to my my patrons have let me know uh, that we can read the DLC items. We can read their descriptions. It's fine. It just might be weirdly out of place or confusing but not like you know any story spoilers so they're at least safe to safe to read um still not sure if i'll be using or equipping them at this current point in time if i feel the need to use them i probably will there's some that give us like uh increases like monetary gain like guildmaster's belt i kind of want to put that on because i'd like money money would be good um, so we, that gives us a plus one strength to armor, our initial one. But I think, you know, probably good to have some monetary gain. We got a plus one to all attributes, plus one armor penetration, stamina regeneration in combat, more damage. This is literally just a ring. What's the deal with the memory band? Made by the Formari, these lyrium infused rings are supposed to help apprentices retain their lessons. They work rather well, too well perhaps as less capable students sometimes wear three or four per finger. This ring, ah, oh, this ring boosts experience points by one whole percent. Incredible. Um, the Wicked Oath, let's have a read. Countess Luciana of Antiva lived as a virtual prisoner in her husband's castle until an elven slave offered her a way out. The slave magically bound a small amount of the Countess's blood into a ring in return for a promise of freedom. The Countess agreed, and the Count was found stabbed soon afterwards, this ring lying beside him. Neither Luciana nor the slave were seen again. Cool. The Lucky Stone? This old stone, set in a golden ring, has been an aid and companion to dozens of adventurers across innumerable years. Its trip to Ferelden was long and convoluted. Some say it has a life of its own. The One Ring. Ah, uh, the Band of Fire. The magical fire used to forge these rings requires great care, but unfortunate incidents of singed eyebrows and burnt hair still result. There is some speculation that this is why the Formari often shave their heads. Interesting. We've got the Dalish Promise Ring. Intended for a Dalish elves betrothed, this enchanted silver band was blessed by the tribe's keeper to ensure a long, healthy life. I can be a I can be a betrothed to an elf, sure. Look at me. I'm rugged and handsome. Perfect. Uh, Embry's Many Pockets. Embry of uh, Gwarren, an elven mage of limited talent who volunteered to become one of the Tranquil, proved herself a talented enchanter, if absent-minded. She kept an array of magical ingredients on her belt at all times, and eventually the belt itself became magical. Embry died of lyrium poisoning many years later, but the enchanted belt remains. Cool. Uh, we do have a Mark of Vigilance as well. Not all um, Maleficar. Mala, I don't know how to pronounce that. We're going to, we're going to go for Malificar until it's it's maybe spoken. Practice forbidden blood magic, but Templars must constantly guard against the possibility that even an innocuous seeming mage has delved into arts that permit him to control the minds of others. The best mage hunters are granted these valued amulets as rewards by the divine. They are often entombed alongside the Templar when he dies. Our feral... Wolf Charm. We get 5 health regen while exploring, 1 plus armor, and have resistance to nature. Uh, chase and Hunters favor charms like this, supposedly enchanted on moonlit nights by scantily clad witches deep in the heart of the Kokari Wilds. 
but perhaps that is just wishful thinking. Um, Amulet of the War Mage. This amulet was forged during the height of the ancient Tevinter Imperium's power, a time when entire armies would flee upon seeing a Tevinter Magister stride into battle. While the name Cavellus remains engraved on its back, any memory of the Magister who created it has been lost to the mists of time. Cool. Um, Pearl of the Anointed. This amulet was torn from the neck of the Emperor Cordillus Draken of Orlai. Sorry, it's Orlay in this game, isn't it? Orlay. Uh, the Anointed during one of the many battles he fought to spread the chant through th uh, Thetis. That's a one plus to all attributes and increases monetary gain. I'm going to put that on. Uh, Bulwark of the True King, a, a shield that requires 32 strength. I doubt we will get that anytime soon. This shield once belonged to Moira, the rebel queen, who was killed when her liege lords betrayed her to the Orlesians. Uh, this shield was taken from her body and given in tribute to the usurper Megrin. It has since changed hands several times. Okay. The Blood Dragon Plate, which is also 38 strength required for this one. Commissioned by an infamous Navaran Dragon Hunter, this armor was crafted in a time when dragons had almost been hunted to extinction. Infused with their blood, this armor gained notoriety after the hunter died at the hands of men rather than the dragons it was designed to protect him from. When all four pieces of Blood Dragon Plate are equipped, the character gains a bonus to defense and armor. Okay, so... Uh, we only have one bit of Blood Dragon armor. But if we have the full set, we get a bonus. Uh, we also got, I think, the Lion's Paw is DLC as well. Lazy Rosamond, an infamous outlaw of the Kolkari Wilds, wore these regal boots. Through, though, uh, through clever ambushes and surprising tactics, she spent decades preying on merchants and eluding the King's Guards until one day she simply disappeared. Okay, she simply disappeared. Some still brave the wilds in search of a hidden hoard of treasure. Now, these don't really give us anything crazy, you know? Less fatigue, a little bit more armor. So a plus one to armor and a 10% chance, chance to dodge attacks and a chance to avoid missile attacks. Um, I'll, I'll chuck those on. I'll chuck on those boots. Look at my fancy boots. New boot goofing. Uh, and we've got the Helm of the Deep. There is a legend amongst the Dwarves of the Legion of the Dead that three centuries ago, a commander of the Legion came across the body of a Legionnaire wearing a helmet inscribed with lyrium. He took it and died nobly, and then his body was found years later by another commander, and so forth for generations. The helmet is said to be a sign of an honorable death for the lucky Dwarf who stumbles across it. Well, at least I can have an honorable death. Now, it gives me a plus two to constitution and a ten to mental and physical resistance. We don't currently have a helmet. But I kind of like looking at my face. So I'm actually going to take it off. Because I feel like having just a few pieces of the DLC gear on um, is, is enough. I feel like that's enough. We don't have a ring on. I might... Do I want a ring? Plus three constitution. I'm tempted to put that on, but it just feels like a lot. Um, I might just do a lucky stone. Let's let's put up. We'll put on the lucky stone. We've got a couple of couple of gifts. We we found a little bag of trinkets, you know, on our way out, and we we've got them. But we'll see how long we keep it for. Um, alas, I think that is that is good. So I wanted to get that reading. I wanted to get that reading out of the way. So we've read our DLC items. Pretty cool descriptions and some cool stories. It seems like a lot of it tells of like legends when it's like we don't know where this person is, but it's a story lost to time, sort of sort of deal. Um, I think I can. Actually, I think I should be able to, um, I guess I could e equip, um, my teammates as well with this stuff, couldn't I? If I, if I wanted to. Um, a runic worry token. A cast rune, the surface worn by a preoccupied thumb. Alistair found it after an early skirmish with the Darkspawn. He is fascinated by arcane imagery, something not expected of a Grey Warden. Cool, so restriction, only Alistair can have this ring. And it's cool, because it's a description unique uh, to him, which is cool. Uh, the Templar Shield. These are made at a craft hall in Denerim for the Templars. So yeah, we know that Alistair uh, used to be a, uh, a mage hunter. Used to be a mage hunter. Nothing unique on these fellas. I got a feeling that these boys are probably not going to uh, 
succeed in the joining because it must be me who succeeds in the joining. Oh, I didn't realize that there was a click and drag option. That's interesting. There is a click and drag. Oh, that's weird. Okay. Um, I also know that um, a, a fancy, fancy tip you can do is you can hold down tab and you can see everything uh, that you can interact with, which I think is a definitely a very useful thing. Sort of highlight everybody's uh, everybody's names and interactable doors and all of that stuff. Um, so that's that is that is quite nice. Um, seemingly from a massive distance as well, so I can actually see if there's an like an, be done. an elf root. Uh, I've acquired a health poultice. These instantly restore some of your health. To use it, drag it from your inventory into your quick bar. Double click it directly from the inventory or right click on it in the inventory and select use. Stores sell more and characters who have learned herbalism can create their own. So if I go into herbalism, we've got one out of one elf root. I just need a flask, which you can buy um, at the store. They've got a bunch of them and we can make a lesser health um, poultice. Or we can make a Mabari Crunch, which is it's a mystery why the fighting hounds of Ferelden desire treats composed partially of plant matter. Crunch is also a mystery. Mabari Crunch restores a small amount of Mabari Hound's health and stamina over time and cures it of a single uh, injury. And we've obviously got our poisons that we can make as well. The only thing that we haven't learned how to make yet is um, our traps. But yeah, I'll be making, I'll definitely be making use of uh, holding down tab when I go through places because um, it'll definitely speed things up. But we're going to proceed, we're going to proceed with our main quest now that we've got that little introductory section out of the way. I'm just, I'm assuming this is the way that we're uh, supposed to be going. It has hey, begun. I'm told you all have business in the wilds. The gate's open for you. Just be careful out there. Even a Grey Warden won't be safe in the forest tonight. All right, out we go. Area unlocked, the Kokari Wilds. Scroll. All right, we're in our first, like, open area, I suppose. I got my squad of four. Now, oh God, and we're right into battle. Okay, wolves. Um, something that's, I guess, I'm gonna need to get used to is managing a party of four now, because I haven't even had a look at our abilities. So I think I checked the, what's, where's my shortcut for tactics? This one is for tactics. Okay, so I can check everybody out. If he's being attacked by a range attack, he'll do shield cover, enemy health, shield bash, and nearest visible shield pummel. So already doing that. Dirty fighting and attack, mighty blow, and sunder arms. All right, let's have a look. I'm going to just check everybody's abilities. So the warrior shield provides a greater chance of deflecting missile attacks. Shield mash, which makes sense. Shield pummel which is kind of the same, but different. Jory has Pommel Strike, Weapon's Blunt End, knocking the opponent to the ground unless it passes a resistance check. Extra weight and effort behind a single strike, a bonus to attack. If it hits, it deals critical damage and a penalty to movement speed, nice. Indomitable, through sheer force of will, the character remains in control, gaining a slight increase to attack damage while being immune to stun or knockdown effects, nice and Sunder Arms. Hinder a target's ability to fight back rather than going directly for a killing below. This is a cool, that's a cool selection of abilities right there. Uh, obviously, Darveth being, having a bow is a rogue. Has the ability to stealth, do dirty fighting and pinning shot. Shot to the target's legs, disable the foe, pinning the target in place unless it passes a physical resistance check. So if I like, let's, let's try this, bam. Right. <laughs> In in place. Oh, my, my character did dirty fighting anyway. I think this will probably be fine. Okay. Nice. Everyone can just kind of fucking auto battle at this point. Combat is so much louder than anything else in this game. It kind of deafens me. It's really interesting. I try my best to balance the audio and I will continue to try and do my best with balancing the audio um, to, f to find a nice little sweet spot. But yeah, when we get into combat, it's almost like two times as loud, which is pretty, uh, which is pretty crazy. I shall do it. And it doesn't, and then it's like, part of me then just has to go, like I've already kind of lowered the volume a bit for the music and sound effects. Do I have to, 
continue to to lower it anytime I enter battle, you know what I mean? Because outside of um outside of battle, it's it's pretty quiet. But I'll try and find I'll I'll try and find some sort of balance. The dialogue needs to stay at the top all the time. <laughs> but we'll see how we go for the rest. I think this is this is fine. Another down. Okay. Having four people definitely makes going up against your standard wolves very easy. I don't have to do I don't have to do many tactics. <laughs> I don't have to really plan much. Um let me fiddle around with some audio settings, I think, before we proceed, and then we'll continue. Alright, we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes with everything. Missionary Jogby. A letter. A personal letter. Generic. New codex. Letter to Jogby. Okay. New quest the missionary. So I've unlocked a side quest from this letter. Okay. Um, let's take a look at our uh, codex. Creatures. So we've got a new one, which is the wolf. It is rather unfair the reputation that the wolf possesses in Ferelden for a people that so clearly adore their hounds. Ferelden simultaneously harbour a distrust of wolves that borders on the unreasonable. Unreasonable, that is, if one were not familiar with the ancient legends regarding werewolves. There was a time in Ferelden's past when demons inhabited the bodies of wolves in great numbers, causing the wars against werewolves and spreading great fear and panic, the werewolves were slain, but even today the noble wolf is still looked upon with distrust. From Legends of Ferelden by Mother Aelis of Denerim. An attack by wolves upon civilized folk happens rarely, only in times of desperation, and even then, only when the wolves have the advantage of numbers. This can change during a blight. When darkspawn rise onto the surface, their presence dramatically alters the savage nature of normal beasts. In Blight's past, as the corruption of the darkspawn spread through the wilder areas of Thetis, it would infect the animals found there, and the more powerful of them would survive and be transformed into a more vicious and dangerous beast. A Blight wolf is one such example, mad with the pain of its infection, and only through the overriding command of the darkspawn does it still retain some semblance of its pack instincts. Blight wolves are always found in large groups and will tend to overwhelm a single target if they can, using their numbers to their advantage. It is fortunate that these creatures rarely survive their corruption for very long. Nice. Okay, more that. Okay, quest related. Let's have a look. Letter to Jogby. My dearest son, it pleases me that you wish to follow in my footsteps and bring the Maker's word to the unenlightened. I wish you had chosen a less dangerous place to do so. Apologies for leaving early for the wild, son, but I wanted to set up camp and get things started. The chastened respect one with survival skills in the wilds, so I'd hoped to get a grip on that before you arrived. And maybe establish an agreement with a local tribe so that we had friends when you came. When you, reach the, when you reach the wilds, you'll find it difficult to navigate. I've listed certain landmarks below. If you follow them, they will lead you to a location I've scouted out where I've left you some supplies. If you're lost, try to get back to that spot and I'll find you. The landmarks are as follows. Beginning at the entrance to the wilds from Ostagar, look for a tree leaning on a ruined building, pass under a fallen tree bridge, pass a submerged tower on the right, look between a high ruined arch and a mossy standing stone, Walk along a path of roots and stones. Look for two large statues with a chest between them. There you will find our meeting point. I love you, Jogby, my son. I hope to see you soon. Your father, Rigby. Rigby and Jogby. God damn it. And he's dead. All right. So he's given us some... Um, he's given us some... Over here. Oh, God. Directions. Oh, God. Who is that? Grey Wardens? Well, he's not half as dead as he looks, is he? My scouting band was attacked by Darkspawn. They came out of the ground. Please help me. I've got to return to camp.
Let's try to bandage him up at least. I have bandages in my pack. Thank you. Oh. I... I've got to get out of here. Did you hear? An entire patrol of seasoned men killed by Darkspawn. Calm down, Sir Jory. We'll be fine if we're careful. Those soldiers were careful, and they were still overwhelmed. How many Darkspawn can the four of us slay? A dozen? A hundred? There's an entire army in these forests. There are Darkspawn about, but we're in no danger of walking into the bulk of the Horde. How do you know? I'm not a coward, but this is foolish and reckless. We should go back. <laughs> you sound like a coward to me. I am simply trying to stay alive. You do not see me fleeing, do you? A bit of fear isn't unnatural, you know. Few relish meeting Darkspawn up close. I know I don't. I want to have a bit. I want to have a bit of dwarvish attitude. <laughs> you know, <laughs> not many humans, maybe. I know I'm relying on you to protect me. Know this: all Grey Wardens can sense Darkspawn. Whatever their cunning, I guarantee they won't take us by surprise. That's why I'm here. You see, Sir Knight. We might die, but we'll be warned about it first. That's <laughs> reassuring. That doesn't mean I'm here to make this easy, however. So let's get a move on. Why do I feel like we might still get taken by surprise? Hmm? Who knows? All right, team. Now, I've got, I took a photo with my phone of the codex entry of the description. So look for a tree leaning on a ruined building. Um, so we've got a tree leaning on a ruined building here. Um, we have a lot of soldiers that we cannot interact with, but they're all dead. Wild's flower. I wonder if it's smart to follow these instructions first or whether I should Ooh. Be on the lookout for whatever those are. Currently unnamed creatures in the background which might potentially be Darkspawn. Or are they... I don't know. Are they... Oh no. Herlock. They're called. Okay. I was like, are we running into Darkspawn already? I shall do it. Alright, let's get into a battle with something else. Oh, okay. They're going berserk mode. Let's just try go for these two before we get a bit crazy. Look at these fuckers. Herlocks. Take that! Why won't you die? Nice. Okay, cool. Herlocks. Vi oh, a vial of darkspawn blood. It hisses and bubbles. Hopefully the flask can hold it. Nice. Uh, Alright, we got a codex update. Oh yeah, the missionary. Um, so we're going to find that. Um, let's have a look. Creatures. The Herlock. Taller than their Genlock cousins, the Herlocks are roughly of human size, but are possessed of considerable strength and constitution. A shock troop of the Darkspawn, a single berserking Herlock can often be a match for numerous opponents at once. They are known to adorn themselves with roughly carved tattoos to keep track of their kills and deeds, though it is unknown whether or not there is a uniform standard to these markings. All right, cool. So we have tree on on a building. Oh, I guess, okay. They classify it as Darkspawn. This is Genlock. Oh God, archers. I'm going to pause real quick. Sustained abilities reserve mana or stamina when they're activated and remain on until deactivated or the character runs out of mana or stamina. Most sustained abilities include a fatigue penalty, increasing the cost to activate a subsequent spell or talent, which makes it difficult to maintain several sustained abilities at once. To manually deactivate a sustained ability, simply left click it again in the quick bar. Note that some of these abilities, such as defensive fire and rapid shot, cannot be used simultaneously. Alright. So Genlock and Herlock. Now who's the idiot? 
I like that they've got a bunch of like mid fight banter. Now who's the idiot? Uncut stone is the color of honey. Vial of darkspawn blood. Okay. So that's our second vial of darkspawn blood. So I guess these, these are darkspawn, but they're like lesser versions, I think, from what I'm getting from the, the codex here, I think. Most common darkspawn in the underground. Stocky and tough. Genlocks are notoriously difficult to kill even by magic. And then this one says... They're the shock troop of the dark spawn. So I guess the dark spawn is like has a, like varying amounts of subspecies. Thanks for the warning, Alistair, though. He was like, guys, don't worry, we'll know when they're coming. I got some death root. Oh, the body's being hung from the trees. You got some loot over there. I'm not sure how, I don't like this at least at, at first use. I don't I don't really know how much I like. I like being able to see more in front of me, you know? I like I like being able to see more in front of me. Um so the description is the tree on a ruined building which is here and then this is the tree bridge, fallen tree bridge past a submerged tower on the right. Look there. Poor slobs. That just seems so excessive. Uh, fallen tower, submerged tower on the right. Look between a high ruined arch and a mossy standing stone. Look between. And then it says walk along a path of roots and stones. I believe this is the, is this not the arch here? Then walk along a path of roots and stones. Oh, it's saving the game. Look for two large statues with a chest between them. I might have gone in the wrong direction. Uh, an arch and a mossy standing stone and then ah here's the path the path of rocks roots oh wolves and there's the statues nice why can't I oh hey oh, I shall do it <laughs> I guess this is good for combat at least, giving you like an like a bird's eye view of like your players and your, you know everyone who's involved in the combat at least. Alpha wolf. Sir Jory is in trouble! So Jory is actually kind of in trouble. Right, I think we'll be okay now. I was just waiting to get kill that alpha wolf. There we go. We've distracted it. Ah! I'm gonna get I'm gonna get paid. I'm gonna get paid with these wolf pelts, baby. I'll make clothing out of these bad boys. As you say. As you say. Alright, nice. And now these are our two statues, and this is the chest. We just stole um, his, his son's treasure because he never got to read the letter. Another letter, a chassined flat blade, which needs 20 strength, scale boots of iron, and a letter. Farewell letter to Jogby. Okay, let's take a look. My dearest son, Jogby, I fear this is the last letter I will write you. I have had difficulty finding the chassin to bring them the Maker's Word. I have, however, seen evidence of their passing. 
They appear to have left this area in great haste, possibly fleeing the so-called Darkspawn that are rumored to be gathering in the wilds in even greater numbers. I have left you a weapon and everything else I can spare, my son. I will try to find you once I have found a safe place. I only hope that you will be safe. With luck, we will meet again. If you see her, tell your mother that I love her and take care of our family. Your loving father, Rigby. We just, and we just took it for ourselves because the boy never read the letters. But we found the path. There you go. Okay. And what we need to do in here is uh, there's a Grey Warden outpost in the wilds. Where is it on the out? I wonder where we are on the map. Okay. I guess we'll just find some some ruins somewhere, and that's where we'll get the cache. It might be this right here. I'm sensing darkspawn nearby. Oh, your guard. now you say it. Now he says it. Oh! There we go. Oh, that's cool. They're they're fucking. Oh, they're going stealth mode. Oh, that's so cool. Unexpected. Nice. His sense does come in handy. Yes. Oh, nice. I can chat to them and actually have dialogue with them. Okay. Should ask him some questions. Where are you from, Davith? Just, uh, just have some casual convo while we're in between killing Darkspawn. I grew up in a village about a day's trip to the east. Little blot you wouldn't even find on a map. Haven't been back in years. I struck out for the city as soon as I could outrun my pa. <laughs> I've been in Denerim for, what, six years now? Never liked it much, but there's more purses there than anywhere else. Okay. So, you're a cut purse? And a pickpocket, thank you very much. Or was, anyhow. Who'd ever guess I'd end up a Grey Warden? This is our rogue character. <laughs> so how did the Grey Wardens find you? I found them. I cut Duncan's purse while he was standing in a crowd. <laughs> he grabs my wrist, but I squirm out and bolt. The old bugger can run, but the garrison caught me first. I'm a wanted man in Denerim, you see, so they were going to string me up right there. What happened then? Duncan stopped them, invoked the right of conscription. My game just glitched. Yep, look at this. He doesn't even want to go through any of the dialogue. The game just glitched. The audio just cut out. This is with that mod installed, by the way, that fix of bugs and everything. <laughs> Don't know why Duncan wants someone like me, but he says finesse is important, and that's why I'm fast with a blade. You bet your boots I am. Besides, it beats getting strung up. All right, uh... Hey, I'm following you, aren't I? Yeah, he's not talking anymore. And I've lost all my audio. Um, so I'm going to save my game. Um, and I'm going to restart the game. And hopefully have my sound back. Yep, no sound on the main menu either. So I'll just quit and I'll, um, I'll jump back in. All right, uh, let's try that one again. I'm going to speak to Darvith again. Yes? Yes? So... A couple of dialogue pits were missed. I had to voice that myself. That's fine. Uh, so what do you think of Duncan? All right for an old bugger. He's faster than he looks, too. What do you think we should do now? You heard the same speech I did. Blood and old treaties. Off we go into the wilds. Let's go. Hey, I'm following you, aren't I? All right. Uh, speak to Jory. I am ready. Are you, mate? You said you were from Redcliffe. I hailed from Redcliffe, but Duncan recruited me in Hyover, a city off the northern coast. Have you travelled there? I've never been to the surface before. I was in Arleman's retinue when he attended King Marek's funeral. It was in Hyover that I met my Helena. I was smitten. She has the most beautiful eyes, my Helena. Now, for years I found any excuse to return there. We married a year ago. Arleman gave me leave to serve in Hyover. But I was attempting to persuade Helena to come to Redcliffe with me, at least until I was recruited. So you abandoned her? Never. I will return to her once my duty is done and the Blight defeated. How did the Grey Wardens find you? Last month, Duncan visited Hyover, and the Ban held a tournament in his honour. I won the Grand Melee. It was hard to leave my wife. We married only a year ago, and she is heavy with child now. But 
Ferelda needs my blade, and I shall not falter. Okay. What do you think of Duncan? He has a seemingly impossible task, with a scarce handful of Grey Wardens, yet he does not complain or flinch from his duty. What do you think we should do now? We need to find those documents and the Darkspawn blood. It should be... interesting. Interesting to say the least. Indeed. Indeed. Let's get what we came for and head back to Duncan. Tell me a little about yourself. Uh, as I said, I was trained as a Templar before Duncan recruited me about six months ago. The Chantry raised me, and becoming a Templar was a decision made for me a long time ago. Duncan saw I wasn't happy, and figured my training against mages could double for fighting Darkspawn. Now, here I stand, a proud Grey Warden. The Grand Cleric wouldn't have let me go if Duncan never forced the issue. I'll always be grateful to him. Okay. You didn't want to join the Chantry? I think I asked him this stuff already. It just wasn't for me. I believe in the Maker well enough, but I never wanted to devote my life to the Chantry. I spent years in that Chantry, hopelessly resigned to my fate. Duncan was the first person who cared what I wanted. He risked a lot of trouble with the Grand Cleric to help me. Or maybe he just happens to be a good man. Getting a little bit of deja vu. Don't worry. I'll try not to embarrass you. Then let's get a move on, shall we? Alright. And then he went up in a spark of flames. Alright. Nice. Hopefully we don't have to deal with, um... Do it. Hopefully we don't have to deal with my, like, audio randomly cutting out when you're in the middle of dialogue or something. It's kind of weird. Yeah, this might be the ruins. But it doesn't look like we can actually access it. Instead, let us... F oh. Wolves versus Darkspawn. Get them! They have such a cool design. I really like the look of them. Oh, never mind. He got knocked down to the fucking ground. <laughs> I'm like oh, trying to get a good look at his face. Bonk. Oh, shit. Reinforcements! Right. Yeah, I can see the advantage of this when there's like so many enemies. You want to actually get like lay of the land. This is so cool, actually. You do not stand a chance. I'm having my own Lord of the Rings adventure right now with my with my crew. Nice. I'm gonna need to get that backpack upgrade real quick, aren't I? Because I'm gonna fill up my my bag with shit. Has begun. Yes? No. No. Hey, I'm following you, aren't I? I do not wish to speak to you. I'm looting bodies. As you say. We have such a our character has such a deep voice. Missionary Rigby Oh! It's Rigby! Rigby died too! Fuck me. He never even got the, uh, he never even got the goddamn weapon. Wild's flower. We've got four vial of darkspawn blood. We're over, we're overachievers. The last will and testament of a man named Rigby. New quest. And codex. Okay. You found the last will and testament of someone named Rigby on a body in the Kokori Wilds. Find the cache mentioned in the will and take it to Jetta in Redcliffe. So I guess Jetta must be the mother. To whoever finds this note, this is the last will and testament of Rigby the missionary, proud speaker of the maker's word. I have come to the wilds to speak the chant, but I fear I will die here at the hands of the Darkspawn. I leave all that I came with to my wife, Jetta. Okay, not the mother, but his wife. Should the reader of this note feel charitable, I've buried a sealed lockbox in our camp, nestled in a Tevinter ruin in the western reaches of the wilds. It is my will that this lockbox finds my wife in Redcliffe, and that it is still sealed shut when it reaches her. To my wife and my son, I apologize that my work has taken me from you, but I know that I die in service to the Maker. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Oh, hang on. These are all signed by Rigby. Hang on. I've gotten this the other way around. This is Rigby. So it was... Hang on. Oh, was Jogby the first one that we found and he was already dead? He died at the beginning? Oh, God. He didn't get very far, did he? And goddamn, those noises that you hear are creepy, aren't they? Darkspawn Mall. For some reason, I read, um... I, th I thought that, that was the, the father who'd written that note and, like, died in the water. But no, this, that was the son that fucking died real quick. Metal Shard. Dude, the sound effects on the on the creatures are so good. They're very effective. I guess there's no point running back to the missionary because you can't check their body after you've already looted it the first time. Jogby and Rigby is too close. Too close together. Alright, we gotta go find a lockbox. Just be done. The my Dwarven character's voice sounds so similar. It sounds like the voice of, um, I don't know if anyone's played Destiny 2, but it sounds like the voice of the spider. It's got such a similar voice that I wouldn't be surprised if it was the same person. All right, so we're heading to the west. So we want to go over this way somewhere. We'll find a lockbox. And then when we go to Redcliffe, we will return it to Jetta. Jetta! So I'll just keep... Part of me wants to know if you can actually toggle the tab thing or whether you have to hold it down. I don't know if I'd actually like have it in here. Is it plot assistance? Plot helpers in explored areas only? I don't know what plot assistance is. Shimmer around objects with loot. Yeah, there's not much that I can really change in here, I think. Um, so what's it called in here with tab? Highlight usable objects, tab. Be nice if you could change it to like hold it down. Uh, it's not, it's not too much of a hassle to just hold down the tab button. It is a minor nitpick. Um, these are some ruins, and this is in the westerly direction. Oh, there's some more dark spawn. Attack! Oh god, there's some- oh shit, that was smart. We've been- we've been kept at- kept at bay. Quick! Up to the archers! Run, cowards! A dwarf outperforming a bunch of humans in combat, as expected. <laughs> nice. I shall do it. My grey warden says. My grey warden sense is tingling. No, he actually says that. Genlock rogues. My grey warden sense is tingling. Is an actual spoken word of dialogue in this game. Um, would the Genlock rogue be a new codex entry? Nope. I shall do it. Just holding down tab to see if I can see anything that's highlighted with like lockbox, I suppose, or something. Where are we? We're not exactly west. I think I should probably be there. Head back up this way. And then we got to find the Grey Warden's cache as well. Oh, 
Yes, these are some ruins. I see chest and hidden cage. Hidden cage that pops up when you search for it. Oh man, okay. Fuck them up. Fuck them up. May your blade strike true. Alistair's in trouble. Hold on. Let me pause real quick because Alistair's about to fucking die. Um, inventory. Is it a double click on it, right? Use. Alistair's in trouble. Oh god. Alistair's getting fucking picked on, dude. Definitely watching my character's health right now, because I prefer not to lose them. I still obviously prefer like controlling my my character though. And then just switching to those as as necessary. Well done, team. Rigby's Field Journal, some chainmail boots, mud idol amulet. A lump of unfired clay in the shape of a bird hangs on a leather strap. The clay is strangely warm as if it were alive. Cold resistance. Nice. And Rigby's Field Journal. Journal with notes on the Chasind Barbarians. Alright. Signs of the Chasind. So that has unlocked some codex stuff for us. I really do like how you, if you find like books and knowledge and letters and stuff, it goes into the codex. That's nice. Signs of the Chasind. The Chasind Barbarians are nothing if not clever. They have hidden markers and signs and the arrangements of stones and rubble along the paths of the wilds. In this way, they mark trails, notes places of interest, and even give warnings in a way that outsiders cannot understand. Interestingly, these markers look indistinguishable from a regular pile of stones. I've dedicated my time to deciphering these signs, and I believe I am close to a breakthrough. The trail markers seem to point to a hoard or a location used for secret storage among the Chasind. I've only found a portion of the message, however. I think that if I could complete the message, find all of the trail markers, I can find this cache and see what treasure the Chasind have to find. Have to hide, I, say, I should say. I have found one such marker near this camp, under a fallen tree, leaning against the ruins. Each marker seems to point to one or two others. I hear rumors that a Darkspawn horde is coming. I hope I can find this treasure before it's too late. Hmm. Fallen tree leaning against ruins and another marker near this camp. Okay. Where is that marker? And how, how obvious is it for us to identify? Guess I'll check it out. Uh, there's a hidden cache as well. Oh, hidden cache in the bonfire. You rummage around in the rubble and find Rigby's secret cache. Inside is an iron lockbox sealed with wax. Uh, we will we will take it and bring it to the uh, to the wife. We'll take the lockbox. Now, in regards to that marker, however, I oh, there it is. Okay, you can highlight it. Cool. Trail sign. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so it just makes a sound. Okay, cool. Uh, kill the squirrel. All right, can I guess we'll go back to that? Um, go back to that tree against the ruins that um, Rigby was talking to us about. This is the tree bridge. The tree against the ruins is right here. So, holding tab. Seeing if there's a trail marker. What's up? No. 
interesting. I realized I was pressing Q, not W. That's why I was running in circles. It might be a different tree and a different ruin. If it's not popping up here. All right. We'll leave that for another day. I think we got to go. Oh, hang on. Oh, wait a minute. They're marked on the they're marked on the map. Duh. Okay. Hang on. They're marked on the map. Um. That makes my life a little bit easier. Very well. Do do do. Okay. Yeah, every time you find a trail sign, we went up here and unlocks new ones. It unlocks new tra new trail signs for us to to follow and discover. I really do love the atmosphere of, uh, of these locations that we're in so far. Do do do. <laughs> and um, running through and having like little you know, pockets of enemies to, to fight in these encounters is, is nice. It's not too, like, not too much, not all over the place. It has begun. Okay. It has begun. All right. Is this the last one here? Oh, does the trail just go to those wooden crates? That we've already opened. This is like the end. This was where they were, and all of these crates that I opened. Looky here. Yep. Okay. I think that was it. I think we've already discovered it. It was this. And then we go in and get trapped. No. All right. Okay. We've preemptively already completed that. <laughs> Too efficient. Um, so if that's done, we're now going to go down. I mean, it could be off this path, but we're going to go down here first. I'm going to assume it's going to be further away. We'll see. To get the 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 cache for the Grey Wardens. I think there's some enemies off this way as well that we haven't fought yet. Will they be a worthy opponent? Oh, a Herlock Emissary. Oh, shit. Okay. We got a mage. Fuck him up. Fuck this guy up. Oh. Dude, look at this guy. He's running away, eh? Running away, eh? Oh, shit. Oh, I'm detecting them. That's cool. Holy shit. Holy shit. I'm on fire! I'm almost dead! Alright, detecting traps. Love it. Love that I'm detecting traps. That makes me very happy. Nice level up, bitch! That was smart of the smart of the emissary to run back like that, try and lure us into a trap, but I am more perceptive than he knows. I'm a perceptive little dwarf, mate. I will not fool for your traps. Death through extract, nice. It shall be done. Nice, a darkspawn star for restriction of a mage, obviously. A strange pole infused with blood and covered in small bones and darkspawn totems. This staff has been corrupted and tarnished by the touch of its former wielder. Nice. Cool. Dead soldier. Excerpt from local myths and legends and a pouch of ashes. A small leather pouch containing ash ostensibly taken from cremated remains. <sighs> All right. A pinch of ashes in the codex. Let's have a look. 
torn from a book on local myths and legends, the Korkari wilds are rife with legends and myths that have amazed and confounded scholars since the fall of Ostagar in ancient times. One such mystery lies behind the tale of Astia and Nebonar, two young lovers who lived in Ostagar. The legend says that Astia grew up in the company of Gazaroth, a spirit of the earth bound, a spirit of the earth bound to an overhang on the bank of a lake in the Korkari wilds. Gazaroth began to fancy her, and they spent much of their days together, talking and laughing. Over the years, however, Astia became a woman and began to seek the company of men. When Astia met Nebunar, the two fell in love, and Astia hoped to bring her lover to see her spirit friend. But the spirit... Okay. But the spirit, angered and jealous, bade her be gone. Gazaroth told her that she would never see it again until she brought her lover's ashes and sprinkled them over their spot. Astia was horrified and she fled from the enraged spirit, but she began to miss Gazaroth and on the day Nebunar asked her to marry him, she cut her beloved's throat, burned him, and brought his ashes to Gazaroth, knowing that their marriage would forever sever her ties to her dear spirit friend. There are legends among the Chassind that Gazaroth still haunts that lake and that those who sprinkle the ashes of the deceased over the right spot can summon the spirit. In memory of the contract with its beloved Astia, Gazaroth will grant a single wish and then vanish, never to be heard from again. A note is scribbled in the margin beneath the page. Marcus, I think this is real. If you take the ashes I gave you and scatter them over a pile of rocks on an overhang overlooking that half-sunken Tevinta dome, maybe Gazaroth will appear and give you a wish. If the battle takes you there, I think it's worth a try. Fucking hell, okay. Shit. I'm about to go sprinkle some ashes on the water. Herlock, taller than their Genlock cousins. Oh, hang on. It adds a new section. Emissaries. Cool. I like that we get notified when there's an update. Herlock emissaries have also been known to appear during a blight. These darkspawn are the only ones recorded as being capable of human speech and are often capable of employing magic. We could have spoken to that one, apparently. Flimsy trap. Can I interact with these and like, I can disarm them. Nice. Do I get anything from it? Yeah. Woo. Trap disarmed. Let's go. Very well. I get, I get XP for that. Nice, dude. Okay. Oh, no, hang on. There's another trail sign here. It continues. Hmm, what's this? Oh. Oh. Hang on. Hang on. The trail signs of the Chassians have alerted you to an old cache in the Kokari Wilds. It's not on the map. But it's somewhere. Guess we'll continue. It's still is an active quest. Uh, make it active? Hmm. Made it an active quest. I think it's the arrow now on my on my compass. On my mini map up there. There it is. Yeah. Yes. More dark spawn. So so we actually did not discover it yet. The rogue has been out rogued. Sir Jory is always in trouble, this one. I'll protect Jory from getting killed without me having to waste health potions, hopefully. I feel like if anyone's gonna die, it's gonna end up being fucking Jory. That man's almost always dead. Yo! Thane helmet. Nice. This is a uh, chassis design meant more to be frightening than protective. <laughs> okay. 
Topaz, Malachite, and Quartz. Nice. We got some robes, dude. Pieced together from ragged strips of leather and adorned with the teeth and bones of animals, this robe is thoroughly frightful. It also smells strongly of tanned hides and sweat. We got a Wild's Bow. A Chassined Crusher. The superstitious Chassined fashion these in the shapes of animals to confuse their gods. If a Chassined happens to slay someone beloved by the gods, they might blame the animal instead. A Barbarian Mace. I'll take it all. All right, quest completed. Let's have a look in here at our weapons because we got a bunch of shit. So I'm currently wielding a mace that requires 14 strength, two damage plus dark spawn, which is nice. Um, damage 550 plus one strength, damage six. And it's kind of better. But I'm going to keep my 2 damage plus dark, uh, dark spawn for now. What's my strength? My strength is at 18 now. I got a nice... A few things in the, a few things in the green. Uh, I also need to level up, don't I? Uh, some more attributes. So my base level is at 16, so it's just been bumped up. I'm going to put my dexterity at 18. Um, I'm going to put my cunning to 18. Actually, no, my cunning's been bumped up quite a bit, hasn't it, with my stat bonuses. So I might actually do a natural bump up strength to 18. One skill. Um, hmm. I might go with improve. I might go with trap making. You know what? I'm probably not going to... I want to try and do trap making, but I don't know if I'm going to really use it much. I might actually do survival instead. Uh, I can level up a talent now. Combat movement. Uh, more easily outmaneuver opponents. A wider flanking angle that makes backstabs easier to achieve. Deadly strike. Vulnerable area dealing normal damage but gaining a bonus to armor penetration. Uh, we've got improved tools, carrying a full set of implements designed to defeat trickier locks and spring traps without harm. A further bonus when lock picking or disarming traps. Okay. Oh, I can use items while sneaking. Oh, let's have a look at these extra levels, actually. Try sneaking during combat, although at a significant penalty, and I've mastered the art of stealth, gaining significant bonuses on all stealth checks. That's cool. I don't think I'm going to be an archer. I'm not going to focus on archery. I'm going to focus on my dual weapons for sure. When in this mode, I strike with both weapons simultaneously. Attacks more, cause more damage. Okay, so these are some um, combat abilities that I can use. Let's... Using items while sneaking is probably like poison and traps and stuff, right? I would say. So that means you could like sneak into an area, craft traps and like put it on the ground and then like walk out and then like you can alert an enemy to your presence and then it'll run into the trap and stuff. So I can see that being very useful actually. Um, I'm going to go for improved tools. Lovely. All right. All right, just waiting to see if everyone's going to, um, waiting for everyone's health to come back before Jory ends up getting killed or getting in trouble once again. Very well. Very well. All right, that is a quest completed. Um, let's go scatter those. The ashes are like right here. It's like right around the corner. So we'll do that now. Let us go scatter some ashes. Will I get my wish granted? Who knows? Where do I do it? There's a pile of rocks up there. I feel like I can do it over this way, right? This feels closer to the ground. Just walk around and see if there's a spot that's highlighted. Might need to be on the other side. Hmm. 
Maybe it might be with a pile of rocks. Like I burn the ashes, but I'm supposed to like scatter it. We, the ashes are already burnt. Why would I burn ashes? Just need to scatter them to the sea like Metal Gear Solid 5. You're all diamonds and then we scatter the ashes. All right, I guess I'll try it further in here then. Is it in my inventory? Yeah. Okay. So I can't just press use on it. There'll be like a set place to to dump them. Maybe I will have to get up high and then I can let them go in the breeze or something. So let's go up this way. It has begun. It shall be done. Oh no, we sprinkle the ash on the pile of stones. There you go, you see a pile of stones covered in a fine layer of dust and ash. Sprinkle more ash on the pile of stones. <sighs> Dead person. Oh, it's a fucking, ooh. Oh shit, it's orange. Oh fuck. Oh shit. We've got this! Hopefully, um, do all of your abilities. If you've got abilities, use them now! Uh, alright, hang on. Let's have a look. What can you use? Knocking the opponent to the ground? Yeah, that's not gonna- that's gonna pass that physical resistance check. Uh, do that. Do that move. The indomitable! Do not get burned alive. We've got this. Defeat Gazarath. I actually thought we were going to get a wish, but holy fuck, it's real. It's real. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. I didn't even see how quickly his health went down. Fuck. His health went down so quick. Does he get back up at the end of combat? Oh, he does. Thank God. Okay. I don't know if deaths are... This is something I need to tell you. Is like, obviously I don't know if fucking deaths are permanent. If it's like no, I don't know if characters can have like scripted deaths or if they can just fucking die. You never know. I don't know if it's like these guys are gonna be in our party long term or whether they're just here for the introduction. You know what I mean? So I'm just like I'm trying to keep them alive because I actually don't know. I know that like in Knights of the Old Republic, your party members just they're fine. But for some reason, it feels different in this game because in Knights of the Old Republic, you assemble your party and they stay in your party screen like almost permanently, uh, except for the dude at the beginning of the first game. Um, but this one just feels different. This feels like these are like guest characters. So I don't know if their deaths could be like influenced earlier or not. So I'm like, oh, don't die. <laughs> you know? Now I feel significantly less stressed about them dying because I'm just like, he just gets up at the end of combat. Uh, one of your party members has fallen in combat. He or she has sustained a serious injury. They cause penalties that can only be cured with an injury kit or high level spells. The injury is indicated by the small red icon you can see above the quick bar um, when you have the injured character selected or the character record. So he has a cracked skull. <laughs> Penalty to cunning to remove this injury, use an injury kit or visit the party camp. Okay, so there are penalties to having your characters fall in combat, which I do like. So it does add a level of like sort of care that you need to take with with all of this. You can't just um, casually, you know, let everyone die and not have any consequences. So we got some chain mail. I've already got chain mail equipped. That's all we got. Oh, no, we got a pile of rags. Okay. Enchanter's footing. Restriction to a mage. God damn it. The skill to construct such objects of everyday utility to the enchanter is as rare today as the will to defy the chantry. Okay. Right away. Right away. Um, so we got chain mail, which I guess I could... What have you guys got? You've got splint mail. You've got studded leather up, studded leather armor. Oh shit! Hang on, Darvith has a cracked skull as well. 
Jesus, both of them have got crack skulls. <laughs> Alright, I was ex for an orange tier enemy that surprise attacked us, I was expecting a little more loot than just a chainmail and boots I can't wear. But that's fine. I'll accept that. It was cool, it was a cool discovery nonetheless. Right? Cool discovery nonetheless. How far are we in this? God damn. God damn! Um... Let me check this shit. Oh, just realized that I should have just made this the active quest, shouldn't I? Oh, it's oh, it's all the way up there. Hang on, it's up. It's up. Ah, oh, saving game. So maybe it's here. I want, maybe one of these days I'll remember that I can obviously just make a quest an active quest if I want to know where it is. Uh, instead of guessing. But I think this is it anyway, so we found it. It's just heavily fortified. All right, my cracked skull unit, you've got it. You've got this. Any last words? Any last words? Oh shit, what is that? Herlock Alpha? Oh shit, hang on, hang on a second. Hang on a second. And how. And how. Careful, mate. Not the Herlock Alpha. He's gone. Not so much of an Alpha anymore, are you, bro? What you got for us? Do it. This dude had more stuff than Davarath. Enchanted dagger. Okay. It has plus four attack, so I am fucking equipping that shit. And five volts for our soul rot coating, a small vial that contains a dark, a viscous liquid required for poison making. Nice. All right. I got an enchanted dagger now. Get that in there. Get that in you. Oh, my inventory is full. The current number of items in your inventory exceeds its limit. You have two options. Clear space by destroying, selling, or equipping, or purchase a backpack. Well, that's going to do nothing for me now, so I guess I'm going to start throwing shit away. Oh, but I, I should have I should have sold a few things, hey? Now, now I'm just in trouble. Um, This shit doesn't sell for much, so I'm going to destroy some daggers. Um... Dagger, iron, and gray iron. What's the difference? This one is does more damage. Um, anything that doesn't sell for a lot, I guess I'll um, destroy them. Um, what else we got in here? That sells for a decent amount, doesn't it? Should probably put on... Um, what is this? A helmet that I found. Oh, look how cool that is. Yes. Let's put that on. Love that. Uh, let's get rid of this shit. Get rid of my leather stuff. Don't need that right now. Get rid of one of those. Nice. All right. I've got 10 slots free. I'll try not to pick up. Try not to pick shit up. I need a backpack. I hope that there's some sort of like a home base chest of some kind where you can just drop all of your bullshit and then revisit it and check back later. Otherwise, I'll be a little bit annoyed, but we'll see. Uh, I've got an invent. I've got an injury kit, a lesser one at least, but I think we'll be fine. My boys with their crack skulls are fine. Yes, I found the warden's cache. Very well. Nice. Done. It's been busted into though. Someone's stolen it. Well, well. What have we here? Are you a vulture, I wonder? 
A scavenger poking amidst a corpse whose bones were long since cleaned? Or merely an intruder? Come into these dark spawn filled wilds of mine in search of easy prey. What say you? Hmm? Scavenger or intruder? Marriage? Marriage, please. <laughs> Um, hello! <laughs> What's your name? I'm but a humble dwarf. <clears throat> um, alright, focus. Um, <laughs> I would first know who you are and where you are from. You are the intruder here. I believe the first question is rightfully mine. I have watched your progress for some time. Where do they go, I wondered. Why are they here? And now you disturb ashes none have touched for so long. Why is that? Don't answer her. She looks chastened, and that means others may be nearby. Oh, you fear barbarians will swoop down upon you. Yes, swooping is bad. She's a witch of the wild, she is. She'll turn us into toads. Witch of the Wilds. Such idle fancies, those legends. Have you no minds of your own? You there, dwarf. You have nothing to fear from any witch. Tell me your name, and I shall tell you mine. Let us be civilized. Yes, ma'am. I'll be civilized with you. I'm, I'm a good old dwarf. Um, I am Mapo. <laughs> a pleasure to meet you. Now that is a proper civil greeting, even here in the wilds. You may call me Morrigan. Hi, Morrigan. Shall I guess your purpose? You sought something in that chest? Something that is here no longer? Here no longer? You stole them, didn't you? You're some kind of sneaky <laughs> witch thief. How very eloquent. How very eloquent. How does one steal from dead men? Quite easily, it seems. Those documents are Grey Warden property, and I suggest you return them. I will not, for it was not I who removed them. Invoke a name that means nothing here any longer if you wish. I am not threatened. Morrigan. All right. Who removed them? My, my, my fair lady witch of the woods who removed them? It was my mother, in fact. Oh, okay. We got, we got a, we got an evil mother. Your mom? Your mother? Yes, my mother. Did you assume I spawned from a log? A thieving, weird talking log, perhaps. Not all in the wilds are monsters. Flowers grow as well as toads. If you wish, I will take you to my mother. It is not far from here, and you may ask her for your papers if you like. We should get those treaties, but. I dislike this Morrigan's sudden appearance. It's too convenient. I don't know about you fellas, but I'm going. <laughs> you guys can stay behind. I'm going alone. <laughs> um, I want an honest answer. Are you a witch of the wilds? Have I been dishonest? Some call us witches, yes, but purely out of superstition. You know what the circle of magi is, don't you? The circle requires an accounting of all mages. That is the law of the land and the chantry. If you wish to tell your chantry about me, go ahead. I have nothing to fear from priests. Why are you interested in helping us? Why not? I do not meet many people here. Are you all so mistrustful? Tell us more about your mother first. She prefers her privacy, but I imagine she will be curious enough why you were here. Come, see for yourself. I say we go with her, fellas. I mean, personally, I'll go alone, but if you have to come, you know, sure. But you guys can stay outside. She'll put us all in the pot, she will. Just you watch. If the pot's warmer than this forest, it'll be a nice change. Follow me then, if it pleases you. It pleases me greatly to follow you. <laughs> Let's go. 
Greetings, Mother. I bring before you four Grey Wardens who... I see them, girl. Hmm. Much as I expected. Are we supposed to believe you were expecting us? You are required to do nothing, least of all believe. Shut one's eyes tight or open one's arms wide. Either way, one's a fool. She's a witch, I tell you. We shouldn't be talking to her. Quiet, Dareth. If she's really a witch, do you want to make her mad? There is a smart lad. <laughs> Sadly irrelevant to the larger scheme of things, but it is not I who decides. Believe what you will. And what of you? Does your dwarven mind give you a different viewpoint? What do you believe? Focus. Um... <clears throat> That's your dwarven mind. I believe you have something we need. They did not come to listen to your wild tales, mother. True, they came for their treaties, yes? And before you begin barking, your precious seal wore off long ago. I have protected these. You... Oh, you protected them. And why not? Take them to your Grey Wardens and tell them this Blight's threat is greater than they realize. What do you mean the threat is greater than they realize? Either the threat is more, or they realize less. Or perhaps the threat is nothing. <laughs> or perhaps they realize nothing. <laughs> oh, do not mind me. <laughs> you have what you came for. Time for you to go, then. Do not be ridiculous, girl. These are your guests. Oh, very well. I will show you out of the woods. Follow me. More time with Morrigan. Coming to the Grey Warden camp. Oh, we're already here. No! She left us! Oh. Alright, fellas. You go check in with Duncan. I'll be right back. <laughs> oh, God damn it. She's gone. Alright, she just... She fast-traveled us out of here. You have successfully obtained three vials of Darkspawn blood. And um, we have recovered the treaties. We can return to Duncan now. Alright. Um, I still need to find something... Um, I need to bring a strange flower to the Kennel Master, don't I? Um, oh, I have found the flower the Kennel Master needs. I've already found it. Never mind. That's good. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, let's check out Codex because we just got a bunch of stuff. Creatures. Uh, so we got the Alpha Herlock. Alpha Herlocks are more intelligent and more skilled fighters, often serving as commanders or even generals. And a Shade. So this is what uh, Davaroth was. It has often been suggested that the only way for a demon to affect the world of the living is by possessing a living or once living body, but this is not always true. Indeed, a shade is one such creature, a demon in its true form that is adapted to affect the world around it. My hypothesis is this. We already know that many demons become confused when they pass through the veil into our world. They are unable to tell the living from the dead, the very static nature of our universe being confusing to a creature that is accustomed to a physicality defined entirely by emotion and memory. Most demons seek to immediately seize upon anything they perceive as life, jealously attempting to possess it. But what of those that do not? What of those that encounter no life or fail to possess a body? What of those that are more cautious by their nature? These demons watch, they lurk, they envy. In time, such a demon will learn to drain energy from the psyche of those it encounters, just as it did in the Fade. Once it is drained enough, it has the power to manifest and will forever be known as a Shade. Such a creature spurns possession. It instead floats as a shadow across its piece of land, preying upon the psyche of any who will cross its path. Perhaps it, believe it's, it believes itself still in the Fade. There is evidence to believe this is so. A shade will weaken the living by its very proximity. If it focuses its will, it can drain a single target very quickly. Some have even been known to assault the minds of a living victim, causing confusion or horror and making the target ripe for the kill. The tragedy of a shade is perhaps that, once it has drained a target whole, its appetite is only heightened rather than slaked. 
When the journal of former senior enchanter Malleus, once of the Circle of Ravane, declared apostate in 920 Dragon Age. Oh. So is Dragon Age just re referred to as like a, a in 920 Dragon Age? Is was that is that a time of day, like an era? Not a time of day, sorry, a time of, you know, is it the era that we're in? In the Dragon Age? I'm still trying to realize the meaning of the name Dragon Age. Age of Dragons. Characters. Morrigan. Which of the wild such idle fancies those legends have you no mind of your own? Of herself, Morrigan says little. She does not deny being a witch of the wilds, but beyond that, everything about her is in question. She is mysterious. I wish to I wish to know her secrets. I wish to know her secrets. Alright, um... Let's get back to Duncan quickly. If we wait too long, you won't be able to swing a dead cat without hitting a dark spawn. Then let's get a move on, shall we? Why is every time I talk to him, he explodes in sparks? I am ready. I am ready. I've also turned into a hay bale. Indeed. Alright then. Nice. Uh, so time of day change, right? Are the Magi finished? Uh, can I uh, use that key? The Mabari's stable for now, but not improving. Unless I get that herb I told you about, there's not much hope. I got it, baby. Is this the flower you're looking for? Let me see. Yeah, that's exactly it. Wonderful. Yeah, give me a moment and I'll make this into an ointment. <sighs> he looks better already. I'm sure he'd thank you himself if he could. What will happen to him now? Let's give him a day or two to recover. Why not come back after the battle? Perhaps we can see about imprinting him on you. That's fucking right, baby. You think that's possible? Maybe. It's likely he understands you're responsible for curing him. Mabari are at least as smart as your average tax collector. Come back after the battle and just... Or take another look. I will. Le oh, Alistair, level up. Okay, let's have a look. Level 5 warrior. 20 strength. This constitution's a little little dire, isn't it? Might put that up to um, 14. Dexterity 18. Get these on some at least some even numbers. And a talent. Let's have a look. So he's got Templar Strike. He's got Righteous Strike. Enforcers specifically chose to control mages and slay abominations. Each of the Templars' melee hits against an enemy spellcaster drains its mana. That's cool. Uh, warrior. Greater health and reduced fatigue penalty for wearing armor. The warrior adopts a challenging posture that increases enemy hostility with each melee attack, drawing them away from other allies. Ah, oh, nice. Precise striking. Tries to make each attack count, sacrificing attack speed for a bonus to attack, as well as an increased chance to score critical hits. Dual weapon and archery, weapon and shield. Shield defense. While this mode is active, the character drops into a defensive stance that favors the shield, gaining a bonus to defense and an increased chance to shrug off missile attacks, but taking a penalty to attack. Okay. With shield balance, the attack penalty is reduced. With shield expertise, the defense bonus increases. With shield mastery, the defense bonus increases further. Oh, two-handed. He's currently got a one sword and shield, doesn't he? So he's not even doing two-handed. So I think we'll focus on the warrior. We'll do precise striking. Nice. All right, the magi finished. They are indeed. Okay, so I can use the... No, yes, no. Is it? Oh. Oh, it's that chest. I could just get that from... from here. Nice. Enchanter's arming cap. Simple and effective, though certainly not standard equipment. Reserved for major circle of magi operations under full supervision of the Chantry, so much as they are aware. Circle towers are frequently drafty. The senior enchanters distribute these to the apprentices in the winter. Where they come by the cows, however, is a mystery. A flask, nice. Injury kit. Money. 
All right, I used the keys. So that was the quest completed. Nice, that's that. Welcome, young man. I don't think I've spoken to Tranquil before. I am one of the Tranquil, my friend. I am of the circle of Magi. But instead of casting spells Magi. and reading tomes, I spend my time enchanting. It is a time-consuming process, but invaluable. Enchantment provides the circle its wealth. Certainly, we would not get by on charity. You speak very strangely. Why is that? Allow me to put it this way. Do you know why those with magical talent are feared? They're not feared by dwarves. Those with magical talent attract demons and spirits. We can be possessed easily, and thus become horrors known as abominations. How wonderful. Even those with minor talents attract hungry spirits. Anyone with the power may learn blood magic from these demons. Hence, we are considered dangerous. This is our curse. Thus, I was made tranquil, stripped of emotions and talent. I am no longer dangerous. Oh, okay. Sounds like a horrid practice. It might seem such to you, but I feel no horror. It's because you have no I emotions. Have intent to serve in my role. Okay. How is someone made tranquil? Our forehead is branded with magic, which stills our talent and mind. The process is irreversible as far as I am aware. Does my dwarven character feel bad? I don't know if he does. Of course. What may I assist you with? What is enchantment exactly? It is the practice of folding magical lyrium into items first practiced by the dwarves. The tranquil have learned their runes, and we use them to apply a variety of magical effects. We create the glow lights, as well as the magic staff or the flaming blade. The irony, perhaps, is that it is our very disconnection to our former talents that allows the Tranquil to work with Lyrium so. A true mage could not. What sort of enchantments are there? Runes exist that hold the power of the elements that increase strength or swiftness. Almost any spell can be given permanency, given enough skill and Lyrium. Naturally, the greater the power required, the more expensive the rune will become to create. True power comes with a price, as we know only too well. I should go. Goodbye. The classic, the classic Bioware response after you get a whole bunch of information is, See ya. <laughs> Bye. Magic and religion. We've only got one out of 41. The Tranquil are the least understood but most visible members of the Circle. Every city, every city of respectable size boasts a Circle of Magi's shop, uh, and every one of these shops is run by a Tranquil proprietor. I want to say Magi. Like, Magi, I've heard in other games and media. Magi just doesn't roll off the tongue as well as Magi to me. The name is a misnomer, for they are not tranquil at all. Rather, they are like inanimate objects that speak. If a table wished to sell you an enchanted pen, kni pen knife, uh, it could pass as one of those people. Their eyes are expressionless, their voice is monotone. Incomparable craftsmen they might be, but they are hardly the sort of mages to put ordinary folk at ease. From in pursuit of knowledge, the travels of a Chantry scholar. Interesting. How's this dude doing? He's still freaking out? I, I don't want to see any. Still freaking out. I close my eyes. Please just leave me be. Hello again, Warren. My belly thanks you. At least if I'm hanged, back. I'll have a little weight on me. Huh. I must continue my prayer. Another can assist you. You are praying in the bushes, my love. I close my eyes. Please just leave me be. Alright. I feel like we should just talk to Duncan, eh? Hey. Hang on, I've pressed, oh, pressed the wrong button. I meant to press my quick save. What is my, I keep forgetting what my quick save uh, control is. So 
was sure that I changed it. Okay, quick save, F9, quick load, F9? What? F9? Why? I was pretty sure that I changed these controls. Okay, so the first F, F1 to F4 is changing party members, that's fair. I'll at least do that. I like having quick save and quick load next to each other, at least. Duncan, my man. I've finished the job. So you returned from the wilds. Have you been successful? Very much so. We have. Good. I've had the circle mages preparing. With the blood you've retrieved, we can begin the joining immediately. So this is funny because I was literally just like, I felt like on this quest there could be potential for Jory and Daveth to like not make it, or there'll be like some like it could have like scripted deaths or something, and then only I make it. But we all passed. We're all here. Maybe we should tell you about Morrigan and her mother. There was a woman at the tower, and her mother had the scrolls. They were both very... odd. Were they wilder folk? I don't think so. They might be apostates. Mages hiding from the Chantry. I know you were once a Templar, Alistair, but Chantry business is not ours. We have the scrolls. Let us focus on the joining. Okay. Now will you tell us what this ritual is about? I will not lie. We Grey Wardens pay a heavy price to become what we are. Fate may decree that you pay your price now, rather than later. Hmm. Is that why the joining is so secret? If only such secrecy were unnecessary, and all understood the necessity of such sacrifice. Sadly, that will never be so. Let's go then. I'm anxious to see this joining now. I agree. Let's have it done. Then let us begin. Alistair, take them to the old temple. I wanted to ask more questions, but that's fine. The more I hear about this joining, the less I like it. Are you blubbering again? <laughs> Why all these damn tests? Have I not earned my place? Maybe it's tradition. Maybe they're just trying to annoy you. Stop yammering. You're giving me a headache. I only know that my wife is in Hyover with a child on the way. If they had warned me, I... It just doesn't seem fair. Would you have come if they'd warned you? Maybe that's why they don't. The Wardens do what they must, right? Including sacrificing us? I'd sacrifice a lot more if I knew it would end the Blight. <laughs> okay. Will you both shut up? Yes, yeah, Sir Knight. Try not to wet your trousers until the ritual starts. I've just never faced a foe I could not engage with my blade. At last, we come to the joining. The Grey Wardens were founded during the First Blight when humanity stood on the verge of annihilation. So it was that the first Grey Wardens drank of Darkspawn blood and mastered their taint. We're going to drink the blood of those... those creatures? As the first <clears throat> Grey Wardens did before us, as we did before you. This is the source of our power and our victory. That's those interesting. Joining ...become immune to the taint. We can sense it in the Darkspawn, and use it to slay the Archdemon. Ah, I'm a dwarf. I'm a master of my own taint. Thank you very much. Um, we drink the blood of our enemies to become a Grey Warden. That's, uh, that's an interesting one. Okay, let's get on with it then. We speak only a few words prior to the joining, but these words have been said since the first. Alistair, if you would. Join us, brothers and sisters. Join us in the shadows where we stand vigilant. Join us as we carry the duty that cannot be forsworn. And should you perish, know that your sacrifice will not be forgotten. And that one day, we shall join you. Davith. Step forward. Jory is 100% going to bail. Drink out of the comically large chalice of blood. It's so big. What the fuck? Couldn't you have given me like a nice wine glass or something, bro? No. You must drink from the big supersized cup. 
Right, here's where we find out if Davith and Jory actually survive and become Grey Wardens or not. I am sorry, Davith. Oh shit. He fucking is not good enough. Step forward, Jory. Nah, he's 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 gonna bail. But I have a wife, a child. Had I known There is no turning back. He's gonna no. take his own life. You ask too much. There is no glory in this. Oh shit. Oh! You should have just fucking drank from the I cup, so bro. Uh, uh, if you're gonna die this way, you may as well have died fucking drinking from the cup. The joining is not yet complete. Bruh. You are called upon to submit yourself to the taint for the greater good. Mmm. I give it a nice hearthy swig. From this moment forth. You are a Grey Warden. Bruh, I took that, took that shot of, oh no, there we go. I thought, I was like, dude, I didn't even react. I'm just built with stronger stuff. Yo. Finished. Welcome. Two more deaths. In my joining, only one of us died, but it was. Horrible. I'm glad at least one of you made it through. How do you feel? Uh, humiliated. You guys were looking up my dwarven skirt while I was passed out. Um, well, there you go. I, I felt like, I felt like Jory and Dabith were temporary characters. That's why I was wondering if they were going to die. Because they just didn't feel like they would have a place in my, in my group. <laughs> Jory's a, I get that Jory was freaking out and he panicked, but goddamn, he should have just like if you're gonna die, at least like you he could have become a Grey Warden. That's the funny thing. Like he could have been fine, but Davith was not built with strong stuff. But we we took that shot of Darkspawn blood, didn't even didn't even flinch, baby. Just had a nice little casual vision of a dragon. The pain, that was unbelievable. <laughs> Still can't believe you killed Sir Jory. Jory was warned that there was no turning back, as were you all. When he went for his blade, however, he left me no choice. It brought me no pleasure to end his life. The blight demands sacrifices from us all. Thankfully, you stand here as proof. They are not all made in vain. Did you have dreams? I had terrible dreams after my joining. Such dreams come when you begin to sense the dark spawn, as we all do. That and many other things can be explained in the months to come. Before I forget, there is one last part to your joining. We take some of that blood and put it in a pendant. Something to remind us of those who didn't make it this far. Take some time. When you're ready, I'd like you to accompany me to a meeting with the king. Bro, this is some weird cult shit. This is some weird cult shit. Absolutely. Yeah, we're like some like cool knights and stuff. We got cool powers. Drink demon blood though. Have a have a couple of weird dreams. Don't tell anyone. You can't leave. <laughs> what kind of meeting? The king is discussing strategy for the upcoming battle. I am not sure why he has requested your presence. He likes me. The meeting is to the west, down the stairs. Please attend as soon as you're able. He obviously likes me because I'm just, like I said, I'm built of stronger stuff. Look at me. You see, you see this face? You see, you, you see these eyes? You, you see the, this is the eyes of a, of a sexy ass dwarf. Those eyes that you can see right now. Perfect. After the joining, you've survived the joining and are now a Grey Warden and just had to witness Sir Jory's blood getting splattered all over your face to do so. When you are ready, join Duncan at the strategy meeting. Apparently the king wishes to meet with you again. All right. Surprised we didn't get a codex entry from that, but we did get a level up. So let's take a look. Um, level five rogue. Uh, I'm going to bump up our cunning by two and then I'm going to put a point into our... Um, oh, actually, you know what? I'm going to put two into willpower because 
more stamina for combat techniques and special attacks, and then I'm going to put one into cunning. Two talents. Um, I will go for stealthy item use, and I think we'll also try and do a dual strike ability. Let's do dual weapon sweep. All right, nice. Um, and you already cleaned up the corpses while I was sleeping. Nice work. If the king wants to see you and Duncan, you probably shouldn't keep him waiting. He might get mad, start crying. You'll feel bad and, well, it won't be pretty. Yeah. I feel like Alistair would definitely be in our party because he's the dude who will stick around with us. But Davith and Jory had no chance. We can speak more after the meeting with the king. All right. Well, looks like we'll be having a meeting with the king. Uh, we're going to bring this episode of Dragon Age Origins to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today for our travel in the wilds uh, to obtain the necessary resources to complete the joining ritual. I've now become a Grey Warden. We met Morrigan and her mother. Uh, so I've already met the family. Like, I, I feel like the relationship is moving uh, out of pace faster than I'm used to but it's going to be a whirlwind romance there's just some just an intense chemistry between a dwarf and a witch it's it's a perfect perfect match perfect match every dwarf needs needs a needs a goth witch you know it's it's going to be great thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Dragon Age Origins I'm super excited to see how this is going to develop next time I'll see you then